Okay, hi every student. Uh, we start our lesson. There's a uh, chapter six, six point one support movement and also glue in animal. Okay, let's see the first one. You see the diagram. We got three diagram here. Okay, first one I want to introduce is a three type of the support in the animal. First one there's a. Okay, you can see the diagram here. First one is an endoskeleton. Okay, endo means the inside one. Exoskeleton means the outside one. Then another one is a hydrostatic. Uh, skeleton okay now we're going to see the one by one okay let's see the first part first part there's a endoskeleton that means the inside one okay internal skeleton they found inside the body okay inside the body then the poses by the vertebrate okay normally it's a vertebrate animal so now you can see the function for the endoskeleton first one they support the body weight okay normally they can support the high body weight Okay, number two, they can maintain the shape of the body. Okay, number three, they protect the internal organ because they're strong. They can protect the internal organ. Okay, number four, the attachment for the muscle and also help for movement. So this one is a function for the endoskeleton. This one is an example for the endoskeleton uh, animal and also human. Okay, let's see the animals such as a human, birds, fish and also amphibia. They're also using the endoskeleton made for the boot. Okay, let's see the second one. Okay, this one is an example, example for the endoskeleton. Okay, then this one also is an example. Okay, now we go to the second one. There's an exoskeleton. Okay, exoskeleton means the outside of the body. Okay, this one posed by the invertebrate. Okay, let's see the structure that can make up from the hard chitin. Okay, the heart uh, outside, there's a chitin. Then after that, or you can say there's a shell. Okay, there's a shell. Okay, so from here, we continue to see the function. Let's see the function for the exoskeleton. Almost the function should be the same. Lah. Important, they want to support the, support the shape. Okay, support the body shape. Maintain the body shape. Okay, after that, to aid the movement. That means they can help for movement. After that, can protection. Okay, they can help for protection. Okay, next one, they also can be... Okay, movement. After that, protection normally is the internal organ. Uh, when to protect our internal organ. Okay, example, we got prawn, we got crabs, scorpion, and also cockroach. Okay, this all is an exoskeleton. Okay, they got outside the cover for their... Uh, inside organ. Okay, they go outside the shell to cover the inside organ. Okay, now we go to the number three one. Okay, before go number three, we see some example lah. We got ladybird, cockroach, grasshopper. This whole this whole thing normally is an exoskeleton. We can say this about the insect lah, Insect type. They're using the exoskeleton. Okay, then we go and see the third part. There's a hydrostatic skeleton. Okay, they consist of the muscular wall. Of the body cavity, there's a fill with the fluid. That means inside got liquid. Okay, fluid means liquid. Okay, the function for the hydrostatic skeleton also same support. Okay, number two they maintain the shape. Number three enable for movement. Normally they want to the support. Number two they want to the shape must be maintained. Number three must be move. Okay, animal with the soft body have the hydrostatic skeleton. The body is normally is a soft one. Example, we got worms, we got caterpillar. Okay, we got caterpillar. And the third one, we got the lichus. Okay, we got the lichus. This one. Okay, normally they will absorb the blood from the body. Okay, lichus. Lichus. Uh, lichus. Sorry, yeah, that's a lichus. Okay, then the continue, we go to the exoskeleton, the sign with the glow. Okay, we're going to see how to change the shell. Okay, invertebrates such as a prawn. Okay, invertebrate such as a prawn, crocus, grasshopper. Just now I told you there's an exo, is it? Exo. Okay, dragonfly and also the beetle. They're called exoskeleton. So from here, there's a make up of the chitin and also the calcium. Okay, the shell they make up with the chitin and also the uh, calcium so there's a hard and also there's a tough get stronger 
So in a glow such as a crab, okay, you can say about the crab, okay, you can say about the old exoskeleton, that means the old part, this part is the old one. So that means at some time, to take some time will be replaced, replaced with the new exoskeleton. So normally they replace the new, new one should be the larger, okay, larger shell. So from here, this process we call it as a ectysis. Okay, ectysis. Okay, the ectysis means the chain, the skin. Okay, small chain become the bigger shell. So this one will happen for the exoskeleton. Okay, then we go to continue. Okay, let's see the how the procedure is going to change the shell. Okay, for the invertebrate with the shell such as a snail. Okay and also the sea shell they no need to be shed their skin as their glue okay snail and also sea shell they don't need to change one okay the shells they grow along with them okay the shell will continue glow together with them okay the glow cloth of the exoskeleton in the state okay let's see the state this one is the state okay let's see when starting should be the egg okay this one is the first state okay one until five this part, the insect will mold his skin. That means ectysis, that will changes the skin. Okay, until the fine state for the name state. So the last part should be the adult. So this one step, we call it as a step shape. Okay, period between the two mouth, we call in star. Okay, one mouth to another mouth. The time taken, we call in star. Okay, mounting and glow will occur multiple times until the adult will be adult state. So they can do so many times to changes. Okay, until they achieve to the adult state, then they will stop. Okay, now we're going to see the diagram. Okay, so this one is a diagram for the state when starting. There's an eight, then they continue for the step one. Mark one, mark two until the last one become the end up. Okay, maybe one mark they can change so many times. Okay, about for the shell. Okay, now we go to the next one. Okay, we see the hydrostatic skeleton in the earth womb. Okay, we see the diagram first. Okay, let's see the first part. We got longitudinal muscle. Longitudinal muscle is the inside one. Okay, circular muscle is the outside one. Okay, let's see the center. Center, they feel by the fluid, body cavity. Fluid means a liquid. And the bottom one, you can see they just like the fur. That one, we call it as a catty. Okay, we call it as a catty. Okay, now we go and continue. Hydrostatic skeleton, they mean the body cavity. They feel with the fluid. That means inside, they got the liquid. Then the liquid is how? Higher pressure. The pressure becomes highest if you compare to the atmospheric pressure. So they can cover, they can cover their body. They do not uh, acting, do not acting by the high atmospheric pressure. They still can cover their own body because inside the fluid is a higher pressure. Okay, now we continue with the next one. Okay, you can see the next one, there are the two types of the muscle. Okay, just now I show you. One is a circular. Circular is the inside one. Then the longitudinal should be the outside one. Okay, now we're going to see the KT. Okay, KT actually was a function. There's a earthworm move. The help for movement. Okay, earthworm, they move on the land by the help of the KT. So this one is a function for the KT, help the womb to move it. Okay, then now we're going to see the movement, how to adjust. Okay, I want you to see the part is uh, this one, the blue part. Okay, the blue part, you find it, that's the longest part. So we can say this one is a body become lengthened, longer body. Okay, longer body, what happened? Circular muscle contract. Okay, circular muscle become contract. The longitudinal muscle become relaxing. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, the longitudinal become relaxing. The circular is a contract. So from here you need to memorize. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, the body lengthen. Body lengthen means they become longer. 
then the circular muscle they will become shorter so they contract together then after that the longitudinal muscle they relaxing so one more thing you see the catty the catty release the grip from the ground that means you can find the catty they never touching to the ground okay i show here i highlight <coughs> excuse me okay you can see here the catty part is here okay they never touching about the ground okay they're still above so we call it as a longitudinal muscle that relax so the catty never touching to the ground okay then we go to the another part the body becomes shortened okay the body becomes shortened means this part the red color part they become shortened okay so now the circular muscle there's a relaxing then the longitudinal muscle they become a uh, contract okay when they become contract now we see the catty what happened can you see the all the catty they were touching to the ground okay they were touching to the ground so from here this one is a differences so because of these two situation they were continuous okay continuous to be adjust finally then the earth womb they can be moved okay remember which part is shortened which part is a uh, lengthened okay lengthen cm contract lm relax so this one is what i want to explain for the circular muscle and longitudinal muscle okay then we're going to see the following there's a endoskeleton in the animal you separate by three first one there's a land vertebrate after that we got aquatic vertebrate after that we also got bird okay the last one is a bird okay now we're going to see the first one land vertebrate sure is a strong and also large okay support the heavy body weight okay number two is aquatic aquatic the size normally is a smaller one okay another one part of the body weight can be supported by the buoyant force of water normally normally the aquatic vertebrate that's in the water so when you are swimming you find it you can be flow up the flow up because of the buoyant force so that's why the aquatic <coughs> or the animal in the liquid in the water they can support by the buoyant force so the weight can be reduced okay now we're going to see the last part <coughs> there's a bird okay but uh lighter the weight should be lighter so finally they can fly okay now we continue with the next one okay let's see the land vertebrate Okay, land vertebrate, first one we say already, there's a strong. After that, firm skeleton to support the body weight. Okay, then the vertebrate such as a elephant, okay, their weight is very heavy, is it? Then it's supported by the two things. First one is a petroleum guider. Petroleum guider, that means in front part. Petroleum guider. The behind one, we call it pelvis glider. At the back side, pelvis glider these two things will support the whole weight of the uh of the vertebrate animals okay, then we're going to see the aquatic vertebrate aquatic vertebrate also is an endoskeleton okay the weight of the aquatic animal they support by the buoyant force buoyant force of the water they were acting upwards so from here you find the fish fish has a smaller and weaker petroleum and pelvis glider although they got petroleum but that's a weaker compared to the elephant okay because it's supported by the buoyant force okay then we go to the birds let's see the bird birds also is an endoskeleton most of the adaptation are reduce the body weight okay important we want to reduce the body weight of the bird reason they need to fly so let's see the example first one there's a hollow and light bone okay the bone is a hollow and light second one the head is a smaller and also the brain <coughs> also is smaller okay let's see the white sternum okay white sternum of the birds okay for the muscle they got flat and also wider so now the body is covered in a light and smooth feather so that means everything in the body must be light so finally they can fly okay this one is a characteristic for the bird lah. Okay, then we continue to see the human skeleton system. 
Okay, for the normal human, we got 206 bones. Various size and also the shape. Okay, let's see the, the place where the bone are joined. Okay, bone and bone you join together. Okay, another bone you want to join. Uh, so this one we call it, there's a joint. J-O-I-N-T, joint. Okay, human skeleton. <coughs> Separate by two parts. The first one is a... Uh, ASEAN, axial. Okay, the first part we call it axial skeleton. Another part we call it appendicular skeleton. Okay, let's see the axial skeleton we separate by the skull, vertebrae, ribs, and sternum. Okay, appendicular we got pectoral guider, upper rib, pelvis guider, lower rib. Okay, now we can see the diagram. Okay, let's see the diagram. This part. Okay, axial skeleton. Okay, first one we got skull, we got rib cap, we got vertebrate column. Okay, let's see the bone first. The skull inside, we in, including the cranium bone and also the facial bone. Okay, there's the upper part for your head. Okay, let's see the rib cap. Rib cap because sternum. Sternum is your breast. Okay, after that we got small rib. Okay, small rib. Okay, and the last one is a vertebrate column, the center one. Okay, your two lung rosso, vertebrate column. Okay, now you're going to see another part. There's an appendicular, appendicular skeleton. Okay, we separate by the <coughs> upper part. For your hand, upper part, the shoulder, petrolar guider. Then after that, <coughs> this one bone, we call it upper rib for your hand one. Okay, this one for your backside, there's a pelvis grinder. Then for your leg, that one is a lower rib. Okay, this all we call it appendicular. For your head, until your breast, that part we call it axial skeleton. Okay, so we one by one, when you see the first part is a scurf. Scurf, we got cranial bone, we got facial bone. Okay, let's see the cranial and facial. Cranial first one sure want to protect your brain. Facial, they want to provide the basic shape for your face. Okay, your face, the shape, they control, they maintain. Okay, number two, they support your teeth. Okay, support your teeth. Okay, next one is a vertebrate color. Your, your tulang also. Okay, let's see here vertebrate. They got 33 small bone. Okay, they got 33 small bone and join together become vertebrae. Vertebrae. Okay, uh, this one we call vertebrae, is it? Vertebro. Okay, after that, this one we call vertebrae. Okay, now, these bone, they are connected from the strong and also flexible color. Okay, this one is a side view. You can see the side view, there's a shape. Okay, curve shape, S shape. This one is a front. Okay, function to protect the spinal cord. Okay, the small bone, this one, they want to protect your spinal cord. Spinal cord is the center, the big size one. Okay, now we're going to see the, the center, the ribs, and also the sternum. Okay, your breast part. Okay, we've got 12 pair of the ribs. Okay, one until twelve. Okay, to run the soap, they are joined to the thor thoracic vertebrae, vertebrae at the back. Okay, they join with the thoracic vertebrae at the back. Okay, now you can see the seven pair. First until seven. Okay, first until seven, you find it that attached to the sternum. One, two, three until seven here. They all attack to the sternum. Okay, another three part. Three part is a eight, nine, ten. Eight, nine, ten. They are indirectly connected by the cartilage. Okay, cartilage is the white color one. This one we call cartilage. That's a soft bone. Okay, seven until ten. They join with the cartilage. Okay, then we left is the eleven and also the twelve one. Two more. Okay, there's a hanging feet. 
Okay, the nail weight attached above sternum. Cartilage also no. There's a free hang. Okay, now the sternum. Okay, we continue with the sternum first. You can see the sternum. Okay, now we go to pectoral glider. Pectoral glider is the upper part. Okay, there's a pair of the pectoral glider. One pair, left, left side and right side in the human body. Okay, let's see the link. Link the upper ribs. Okay, upper ribs to the axial skeleton. So the pectoral glider is this part. The link with the upper ribs. Okay. To become the axial skeleton. Okay, now you see the batrolar glider that consists with two things. One is a clavicle, another one is a scapula. Okay, we got two things: clavicle and also scapula. Okay, this part is a scapula, the bigger part. Upper part, bone. This one we call clavicle. So this one is a whole diagram of the spatula uh, glider. Okay, now we go and see the upper part. After the spatula glider, we go to flowing. Okay, our flowing will consist of the humerus, radius. Okay, radius is this part, the two small one. Okay, outside is a radius, the inside is a ulna. Okay, after that we continue go down. Okay, this one the part. You can call it there's a ribs, is it? For the ribs inside, they got capus. Okay, we call it capus. After that we got uh, metal capus okay capus is a small one metal capus is a overall this whole thing the whole thing that means the radius and ulna we call it as a metal capus okay after that this one is a capus okay the last one there's a phallus phallus that's a your hand whole hand we call it as a phallus okay the end of the humerus end of the humerus okay that's a ball shape that's a ball shape uh, humerus this whole thing okay the one of the ball shape okay the ball shape is attached to the petrolar guider okay actually it's here petrolar guider so the petrolar guider is a this one humerus is it so here got one of the ball shape okay the joint with the shoulder glider Okay, the lower end of the humerus, this one is lower end, just now is upper end, lower end of the humerus that attach the radius and also the ulna. Okay, lowest part, this part, okay, we got two things, radius and ulna. Okay, then the radius and ulna are attached, okay, these two bones attached to the wrist. Okay, the wrist, then bottom we got capus. Okay, so this whole thing, we call it as a wrist. Lah. Overall, it's a wrist, but inside we got a capus bone. Okay, this one is an upper rib for your hand. Okay, then we go to the metal capus. Metal capus is your palm. Okay, the palm. Then the phallus bone that are from your finger. Okay, every finger we call it phallus. Your palm is a metal capus. Okay, then we go to the pelvis. Pelvis glider is your hips, your hip bone. Okay, at the back side. The pelvis glider, they support the weight. Okay, protect the urinary, okay, bladder, and also reproductive organs. Okay, this one is cover all the below part. Okay, let's see the lower ribs. Uh, lower lip are so many things. Okay, after the pelvis. Okay, let's see the concept with the... Uh, Femur, okay, femur, okay, femur is the first part that join with the uh, pelvis. After that is a uh, patella, okay, patella is a uh, one of the ball bone. Okay, after that we got tibia. Okay, just now it's radius and ulna, is it? Now it's a tibia and also the fabula. Okay, tibia is a thicker one. Fabula is a thinner one. Okay, after that, the center, you want to join. This one normally we call wrist, is it? This one we call tarsus. Okay, tarsus. Okay, the tarsus, then after that, the join down, the finger, the toe. Okay, toe finger. Okay, join with the tarsus. This whole thing we call metatarsus. 
then metatarsus that mean your feet okay your feet we call metatarsus and this one the toe we call it as a phalanx okay now the lower end of the fee of the female the lower end of the female is attached to the tibia and fibula okay lower female female let's see the down one we got tibia and fibula okay after that the lower end of the tibia lower end of the tibia okay uh, and also the fibula that attach to the thesis okay attach to the thesis that's the anchor anchor of your leg we call it thesis okay this one is a lower leg then continue the lower leg we got thesis then attach to the metatarsus bone they form by the foot okay your foot the bottom one so it attached to the phalanx or you say there's a bone of the toe okay the last part is a phalanx there's a bone of your toes okay so this one is a lower rib part okay so this one i think there's no problem let you to be labor okay we labor the first part okay cavical the okay, cavical joint with the pectoral uh, pectoral pectoral glider okay then this one center one we call it sternum then the follow one you see the small one small one we call it as a okay rib cap rib cap the small bone okay after that the center straight some more there's a verti vertebrae column okay then we got pelvis glider okay this part patella this one is a patella okay then they continue with the this part this part is a skull, is it? Okay, there's a skull. <clears throat> then we join with this one. This one is a patella glider. Oh, sorry. There's a scapula. Okay, patella glider inside, they got scapula. Okay, after that, we got humerus. Okay, humerus. Okay, outside is a radius. Inside is a ulna. Okay. Okay, after that we got outside the biggest one is a tibia. Okay, the smallest one we call it as a fibula. So you can check your answer. Okay, now we are going to see the following. Okay, now type of the bone in the endoskeleton of the vertebrate. Okay, first one we got two types. One is a compact one. Can you see inside all fully? Okay, so from here they have little or you say no empty spaces inside or it's a compact okay large and strong such as a elephant tiger and human we got a compact boots okay the next one type of the boot another one we call this a hollow boot hollow boot can you see the inside they got some empty space already this one normally human also got when you are old when you are old you find it your boot is slowly slowly become hollow Okay, that's why you want to drink something, the meal, they got calcium. So have a lot of the empty space filled with the A inside. Okay, such as a, a chicken, sparrow, human. Okay, this one is a light and also, although it's light but still strong. Okay, because the strength is high. Okay, now you can see this experiment, I call you to do it before the holiday, before the MCO. Uh, I know not before MCO, during the MCO. I call you in your house, you can create this one experiment. We want to compare the uh, the strength of the compact bone and also the hollow bone. So from here, the problem statement is a uh, hollow bone is more stronger compared to the compact bone. The stronger here means the strength. Okay, they're not easy to be bending the strength. Okay, so from here, you can see the hollow bone are stronger than the compact boot now you can see the apparatus uh manipulate birth first we control what manipulate variable will control the type of the cylinder or you say you control the hollow and compact cylinder responding is the number of the books so now the book we using the using something using the hollow or compact boots okay we're never using the boon again cylinder to support the books so if you support more book that means you are more stronger lah. so from here they're using constant variable there's a length and also diameter of the cylinder okay these two they will be affected so we must make it become constant okay now this one is an example of the experiment 
we using the exercise book because exercise book become the load then using the a4 paper become the cylinder cellophane tape and also the box cover normally it's the a4 box cover okay first one they say roll the shape of the a4 paper into the hollow cylinder 2.5 cm hollow mean you take one pieces one piece only and then you go to roll make it diameter become 2.5 then you're using the cellophane tape, you type the bottom and also the starting of the cylinder hole in place. After that, you need to make three more same pattern of the cylinder. That one is a module A. Okay, after that, you need to tightly A4 paper to make solid cylinder. Type the top of the bottom part and hold it in place. Okay, after that, three more already. Base above become the method. So you find it. First one is a hollow one you never tie up the fold this one you tie out make it become closer smaller so from here you also make three this one's a model b now you stand the four hollow cylinder on the table so that will act as a legs to support the weight of the exercise book <clears throat> now you go to add add the exercise book until the cylinder collapse that cannot support now you repeated the procedure for the solid leg okay for the compact cylinder you also repeat the same thing so finally we need to compare how many books they can support so this one is a result this one depends for your result i don't know i don't know result i just know the compact bone is not, the strength is less than the hollow bone the hollow can be more supported for the strength okay they're not easy to be bending okay now we're going to see the discussion okay cylinder in which one module is heavier sure it's a compact compact is more heavier that's a model b okay which one cylinder able to support more books the answer should be the module a that's a hollow one okay because the strength should be higher that means although they can support they never change about the shape that one is a hollow okay now you can see the discussion what's the represent by the model a module a is a hollow boot b is a compact boot okay now we need to state the two advantages of support the system represented by the paper in the cylinder a what advantages the first one is light and strong because there's a hollow boot okay number two they require less calcium and phosphorus okay although you say the module b is a strong but they need more calcium and phosphorus to support it but the hollow one no need Okay, now we need to name the two animals for the hollow bone. Normally, the hollow bone is an animal that can be fly. Example is a bird. So, from here, your answer is a bird and also a sparrow. Okay, give the reason why they need the hollow bone. Reason because they need enable it to fly. Enable it to fly. Okay, now we see the discussion. Can you name one animal that's compact bones? Uh, that's an animal compact bone more like human also yes is it so from here we just either one elephant okay elephant sure is a compact bone okay so from here the conclusion what we can say okay the hypothesis that's an accepted hollow bones have bigger strength compared to the compact boots so this one is a conclusion your conclusion must say hypothesis is accepted after that we go to explain <clears throat> okay finish this one is experiment what you need to do some student also pass up the video to show me okay then we go to stability in the animal okay the ability of the animal to maintain the original position so you tell me this tree which one is more stable sure the crocodile more stable is it okay because whole flat lying on the floor you see this one this one still stable like because four legs also on the ground okay this one highest okay this one is lowest stability because you're too high already okay you can see the relationship factor they will affect the stability first one is the center of gravity okay the lower of the center gravity the more stable the object let's see the two chair okay first one pp is the lower one q is the highest one so you'll find it this one the center of gravity should be the highest Okay, because you lower to the center. Okay, another one is uh, base area. Base area also will be affected the stability of the object. Okay, let's see the first one. Okay, the first and the second one. 
The second one, the area at the bottom is a smaller. The first one, the bigger surface area at the bottom. So I find it, this one is more stable. Okay, area bigger, then you find it, they more stability. Okay, this one is a tool, how to make the object become stable. Okay, so this one is an example. You see the giraffe. Okay, the giraffe, they spread their legs wider when they want to go down, drinking the water. Why they want to spread the leg? Lower the center of gravity, make it become more stable. Okay, another one is a kangaroo. They support their bodies with their tail. Okay, with their tail, when the tail they put at the bottom, you find it the base area. The base area of the kangaroo become bigger, so they're more stable to be stand there. Okay, this one is another stability. Okay, so this one I want you to do is an exercise from your textbook. There's a page one to eight. So now I want to show the answer. Okay, let's see the first one. They say the importance of the support system. Why that's important? So let's check the answer. In that's important because the support system they make sure the animal are able to move. Okay, able to move smoothly and also effectively. They support your body. After that, why they want to support your body? Let you to be moved. Okay, number two, they say explain the meaning for exoskeleton, endo, and also hydrostatic. Okay, exo, I think this one I can find inside the textbook. Exoskeleton, there's a frame. They make from the waxy chitin or you say shell. Okay, endo is the inside one. The endoskeleton is made out of the bones, or you say there's a cutie. Okay, hydroskeleton, there's a consists of the muscular. Okay, consists of the muscular. Then after that, they converting a certain of the body gravity filled with the fluid. Okay, that one is uh, hydrostatic. I think you can find inside your textbook here. The cover it. You cannot see what is that. Okay, the next one. Now we need to explain the glow curve of the animal. Remember the glow curve? Just now the the the, the insect. Okay, the curve shape, how they go to glow. The glow curve as the exoskeleton animal in the state. The exoskeleton is made up with the wax, wax, uh, wax chitin. That's a heart. Okay, the outside the shell should be hard. It cannot be expanded. So to cover this problem, exoskeleton animal will mount will a few times. They will mount a few times to reach the adult coat. For example, just like it's a glass hopper, they will change. Every mode they will change. Change about the chitin, after that make it become bigger. Last one become adult, then no more. Okay? Thank you.